Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today I've got a very highly anticipated uh, uh, you know, interview today with Mr. Cliff High. I've been looking forward to this a long time. Uh, Mr. Cliff High is well known on, on social media, on YouTube, and in the financial industry in general. Uh, and he is in charge of halfpasthuman.com, which is uh, you know a website that you definitely want to check out. You want to see his reports for sure. Uh, Mr. High, thank you for joining me today on Looking at the Markets, sir. Glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to talk about halfpasthuman.com for sure, and we're going to try to get people over to your site to check out your reports. But first, uh, I just wanted to get some of some of your wisdom and insight today because uh, these markets, my goodness, it seems like the market that just wouldn't won't go down for any length of time. Um, you know, the so-called Trump trade has been just going strong, and it, it seems like the market doesn't want to come back to reality. Uh, can this is this sustainable for the rest of 2017? What do you think? Oh, I think it's sustainable basically forever. The the issue is you're not uh, the the question. Uh, okay, uh, we are not framing our questions. Uh, around the reality we have to deal with. Right. So if we were to look at the market on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly, etc., we would see this general progression upward, 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 upward with very few little hiccups. And we think, well, this is reflective of the underlying uh, social order uh, as it should be. And that's what they want you to think, and that is uh, precisely why they've engineered the markets to follow that trajectory. So they can sustain it as long as they wish to. What we're observing, however, is a um, uh, hyperinflation. Uh, it's a hyperinflation that reflects more like uh, the hyperinflation in Germany in 1918 uh, than in 1923. And uh, so it will uh, accelerate slightly. And, and spill over into other areas, and those people that are not watching the other areas won't be aware that it's hyperinflation until we reach levels of maybe Dow 50,000 or 125,000. And then at that point, you'll say, well, these 30 stocks are now worth 125,000, and I can buy two loaves of bread for that amount of money. And that will be the, our reality at that point if you're still dealing in dollars and dealing with the uh, paper debt markets. Because what you're actually watching is the very end of a grand, of a number of cycles, grand cycles, some of them running over almost 300 years. And uh, the paper fiat or, or the fiat money experiment that Nixon launched us on, <clears throat> taking it away from gold in 1972, is now at its end. Along with that, it's also going to bring down all these other cycles, the derivatives, uh, which are a fast burn cycle because they're so large. We, um, when I talk about cycles, I don't necessarily mean uh, economic, <coughs> excuse me, so much as I am thinking in terms of energy or energetic sure. cycles. So things that are very large and fast moving are going to be very short lived. Uh, thus, the derivatives in their cycle might only really exist the past 50 years, another year, and then that's it. Whereas the uh, slower-moving initial coinage that eventually supported uh, the paper fiat uh, has been in place uh, for 200-plus years, 254 or something like that. But that cycle is also ending. So if you're looking in the right spot, you see hyperinflation everywhere. I saw hyperinflation today on a grand scale. Hmm. Kind of a scary picture down the road, but Dow fifty thousand, amazing. You know, but I, it's meaningless. It's yeah, meaningless. You won't yeah. be able to get out, and even if you did get out, uh, of what value are the fifty thousand dollars in a uh, um, system that's degrading? Mm, kind of scary. Uh, right now, I, I'm a huge fan of precious metals. Um, just a personal question: Are you a stacker yourself of precious metals, or do you go for the ETFs, that kind of thing? No, I would never touch any paper. <laughs> an ETF to me is a, an abomination. It's a it's a con job. It's a, a, a deliberate attempt or deliberate scheme uh, to defraud people. Um, 
because there, right, and I won't go into the details. That's just my opinion of it. No, I never, never would never go into a paper investment, but I certainly, oddly enough, I'll go into uh, uh, an ethereal investment in the form of cryptocurrencies. I like, I like metals. Um, stacking. I'm an old guy, so no, I can't stack that stuff. It's all too heavy. <laughs> I just don't, just don't want to deal with it. Plus, while it's a good store of value, it is simply not a currency anymore. And every everybody needs to recognize this that in the fa- in the past, when there were fewer humans on the planet, gold or silver could serve as a currency. Now it's not feasible. Uh, and even if it were, uh, even if we actually acknowledged the true amount of gold that's out there, according to the uh, 1928 through 1934 global assay done by Buckminster Fuller and just accepted that his numbers were correct and we knew that we had enough gold that we could each have dozens and dozens and dozens of ounces around for all seven billion of us and circulate those, it still would not happen because the stuff is just too clunky to circulate and be an effective medium of exchange in a planet where I need to get something done in a business environment in northern Africa five minutes from now. Hmm. You know, I've actually been looking at uh, the lesser known and lesser spoken of uh, precious metals such as platinum, palladium, uh, those seem really exciting right now to me. What do you think? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know <laughs> why they would excite you. Uh, that, that would be a pers- personal uh, um, uh, proclivity on your part. Precious metals are fine. They're a good store of value. Uh, the um, exotic metals, if you want to get into actually something that uh, all right. If you were to step outside of the monetized metals, sure. gold and silver, uh, then you then you have to ask yourself: in the world that we're now living in, uh, what is the use case or value case for uh, palladium, platinum, etc.? And I would argue that they are precious only in an industrial sense at this stage. And therefore, you would have to say: well, if I'm going to be into that space, let me see what are the really good industrial precious metals to purchase and I could point you at two or three others that would are going to outperform um, uh, palladium and uh, platinum because they're uh, these these metals are tied up into the new energy fields and so if you were looking at at that kind of a thing you'd be looking at um, rare earths that are going to be used to uh, moderate and ameliorate the um, uh, constituency of the lithium uh, iron and uh, potassium or lith- uh, the lipo batteries, hmm. and so uh, that's going to be a huge giant market. And so there's a real use case for those, whereas the use case for platinum is falling, as is the use case for palladium. Interesting. Okay, very good, sir. Now we did touch upon uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, is the best known, but it seems. A little toppy. Seems like the uh, hype has already been priced in. Possibly, it might even be on the decline now. It, was, it almost went up to three thousand. Now it's around twenty five hundred something. Should we be looking at other, uh, you know, altcoins, Ethereum, Ripple, things like that? What do you think? Sure. Uh, yeah, you should look at those other coins. But um, again, your perspective is that of someone who's examining this in a small market sense. And so if we take a step back or climb up a ways and look down from the top of the building, we see that what's going on with Bitcoin and the other currencies is exactly as I stated earlier, it is hyperinflation. In a hyperinflation, people will flee degrading money for anything that they can get. So in the course of the degradation of the denarius at the uh, fall of the Roman Empire, the most valuable asset one could purchase was wine. Uh, and it was a, both a store of value and a, and a consumable, but also a commodity that was used to trade. And it was used uh, in lieu of the denarius because they kept uh, adding copper until eventually there was only 2% silver in the denarius. And that was about the end of the Roman Empire. We see the same effect when uh, the florin was being degraded and people fled to try and get value stored somewhere else. And they ended up with the tulip bulb mania. Uh, so... Uh, that's what's going on at the moment. The dollar and the derivative instruments of the debt industries are dying. They're dying very rapidly. A new world is being born as we speak. One will not crash, followed by 300 years of darkness, to be replaced by the other. The the one that is that is dying, the dollar, is going to to fall over like a cedar tree, and the new tree will emerge out of the stump of the old one. And that new tree is already uh, germinated and growing quite rapidly, and that's the cryptocurrencies. So I personally expect that Bitcoin, a year from now, we will be, um, well, not even a year from now, but by the end of February of next year, we'll be looking at Bitcoin in about uh, 13,800, according to my data. 
and uh, that uh, around that time we should see gold around 4,500. And it is it it certainly has a use case as a store of value, but it's not exciting, glitzy, or usable in an electronic. Um, technological environment and that's where we live now so it'll be uh, extremely highly precious should that technological environment ever crash but at that point that preciousness is going to be limited to how far you can walk and carry it hmm. interesting points there i uh, wanted to talk about halfpasthuman.com i'm looking at it right now link is in the description everybody should check that out uh, i see that you've got in big letters right there the bear naked wealth report <laughs> that's <an> exciting. <laughs> yes. yeah, that, that sounds exciting yes. to me. Or well, maybe a little well, here's, dangerous. here's what I'm doing, though. Yeah, <laughs> what I'm doing with all of this is I'm putting a, um, uh, giving you a, a, a perspective of 40 years programming experience at a very, uh, at many different levels uh, on the con cryptocurrencies and so forth, because at their core, they're all software. And that is where they are made or, or broken. And so my goal is to start there and then try and rapidly educate people as we go forward. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, just looking through it, looking through all the reports. Um, you know, what, what can people expect if they were to uh, purchase your reports? Uh, here's the situation. Uh, in the Bare Naked Wealth reports, one through three, I included our woo-woo stuff, okay, which is our forecast of the future based on my emotive reduction engine, which forecasts what emotions we will be seeing played out in markets and elsewhere. Um, 30, 60, 80, uh, 180 days beyond where we are at that particular moment that the report comes out, and some long-term forecast. So those first three reports include that, that component. Uh, the fourth report is simply a breakdown of uh, cryptocurrencies and how to analyze these for a um, well-managed portfolio if one were an investor or even as a speculator. And I was attempting in that fourth report to try and eliminate uh, or trying to uh, point out the uh, pitfalls and the bad code examples and all these kind of things uh, that I'm able to see. However, there are just two. Uh, so report number five coming up, I'm going to go back to the same format I used in the first three. And we're going to eliminate any mention of altcoins that I that are not worth mentioning. So the only thing I'll be talking about are basically my uh, personal uh, evaluations on coins that are uh, good uh, and will stand some chance of returning value in the future. Because bear in mind, I expect 97 out of every 100 being created to simply fade away because they have no effective use case. The people behind them have muddied uh, thinking or the programming is bad or they're unaware of true economic conditions or any number of other reasons. So there's only going to be a few gems. We're at the same period of time now as I saw in the late 1990s that led to the uh, formation of the standout Apple, Microsoft, and Google, that kind of a thing. Sure. And I'm hoping to try and help people pick those out of the current crop of, of uh, cryptocurrencies. That is the hard thing, isn't it? Getting in before the big run-up. Anybody can get in once, you know, I always say once your Uber driver knows that uh, something is hot, it's probably too late. <laughs> and so you're helping yeah, this, people to get in early in the yes, game. Yes, correct. And, and uh, on solid uh, foundation on um, programming um, uh, that, it, that makes sense, you know, because there's a lot of these coins that simply don't make sense. Some of them are really goofy, uh, like a fun token. The right. fun token makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I expect at one point we'll see, you know, the laughing clown token. Right. And But, but it, it'll probably have a very good use case, and we'll probably say, yeah, that makes sense, too. Sure. Or a, a Dogecoin, which has a Shiba in you on the front. It's cute. Right, but, right. But how many people do you know that actually use that? That that's a big question. well. <laughs> you can't go by me because I know a lot of goofy people, and a lot of them do <laughs> use it. Yeah, but on the other hand, you also get like Veritasium, right? right? And if you'd gotten in on Veritasium in the beginning and been able to buy it at, at a, oh, uh, getting it effectively at sixty to one to Ethereum, and now it's two to one, and eventually, in my opinion, it, it will eclipse Ethereum. That is to say, we'll be figuring out how many Ethereum's it's going to take to buy a very coin. Yeah. And I and I back this, um, my opinion. Uh, on the um, uh, 10, 15 years history of the people involved uh, with the very coin. And there's a few other stellar gems out there that I'm able to find, but boy, it's a wading through a huge marshy area to pick up these guys. There's just so many of the shice coins showing up. Yeah. 
and that's why people have to check out your report on halfpasthuman.com because you, you've done the due diligence, you've done the research, and uh, other, others can benefit from that. And finally, I, I had to ask you about this. Um, I saw this headline, Cliff High's web bot predicting the sun will begin scorching men in 2017. I, I know that's not financial necessarily, but uh, that, that scared the heck, the, the heck out of me. What's going on here? Well, uh, you have to understand that the that what I was ref what that headline references is um, uh, we have throughout our entire planet there are all these caves that humans used to live in and when they used to live in there forty fifty sixty thousand years ago they would draw stuff on the walls they were bored they were cave guys but they were bored they didn't have electronics sure. and so they would draw on the walls and they drew from their personal experience and many of these well uh, the vast majority of these caves will have drawings in them of people. Uh, sticking, uh, uh, standing at the mouth of the cave and putting a stick outside the uh, the mouth of the cave and having the stick catch on fire in their hands, and then coming back. Some of the things even go on to illustrate using that fire that they just got by simply sticking the stick out the the cave to light their fires, campfires for cooking and so forth. What this refers to is the current state of the sun disease. It's not really a disease. It's where we're, we are in the uh, sun's transit through interstellar space because the sun moves. And the sun is not a nuclear reactor. It's much more like a uh, highly charged electrical uh, ball of plasma. That ball is shrinking, and it's going to go down from 5,000 Kelvin down to about 3,000 Kelvin over these next 100-plus years. But we're at that point right now where that um, slight shrinkage and the cooling of the sun's um, uh, corona is letting interstellar energies come in around the sun. So we're being uh, bombarded in a way that, that you and I have never lived through before with uh, high energy particles that are disturbing our atmosphere uh, and, and uh, causing these intense sunburns in just a few minutes outside. They're leading, uh, actually causing us to go into an ice age, which is the good part because the ice age protects us uh, during these periods of time. And uh, we are going into an ice age because UV uh, radiation class C, is, uh, which never ever used to even come down to Earth, is now hitting the planet so intensely that vast areas of the ocean are uh, evaporating and forming these rivers of uh, water in the sky, which uh, help uh, occlude the sun and also cause the ice age by bringing uh, precipitation into areas that will freeze up and this kind of a deal. So, you know, we've got snow persisting in California. We've got other areas of the planet that are having snow through summer. So this is the official, in my opinion, opinion my my personal official year first year of the ice age uh, because we'll have ice that will form in summertime and it will persist all the way through and it'll grow next summer and we'll be much more into it next summer so no we're not going to start bursting into flame as a result of the sun now but it wouldn't surprise me that such conditions might exist to where you couldn't go out in the sun from say 11 to 1 or 11 to 3 something like that would depending on where you're at in some specific parts of the planet without suffering extreme damage and maybe even death at some point here in the future and we this year and next year we actually according to our data sets will have instances of people that will be unprepared for it will leave a building and be struck by the sun with such ferocity that their lives will be at risk I hope people are listening to your message because it's so important. We need we need gentlemen such as yourself out there to warn us to let us know ahead of time, um, you know, uh, what to look for, what to be aware of, both financially and as we just spoke about, uh, and beyond the finances. Because you know, none of the financial stuff matters so much if uh, if if we're dealing with the science stuff that that could could end it all for us. You know, pretty scary. Well, you know, the um, the saying is quite true. Your your wealth is your health yeah. in all respects. <laughs> so, you know, keep yourself healthy and uh, you can always make money. Absolutely. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Uh, I know your time is valuable. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, the um, website is halfpasthuman.com, link in the description. Do you have any uh, social media sites you'd like to let everybody know about? I, I do things on Twitter, but I'm getting into some big projects at the moment, so I'll be visiting that less and less. Uh, but really, that's it. Okay, gotcha. So everybody should visit the website ASAP. Thank you, Mr. High, for joining me on Looking at the Markets. You're welcome back anytime, sir. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.